You know, it's, uh, it's funny. The last time I preached this gospel reading, I referred to a pandemic. <laughs> I, uh, I said a local crisis of the moment was like the swine flu, a pandemic, both serious issues that deserved our attention and forethought, but they weren't reasons to panic, reasons to lose hope, or proof that we no longer enjoyed God's favor. They were an obstacle of the day, and we'd deal with it, and one day it would be a non-issue, and we'd have a new problem to tackle. Life would go on, and the church would carry on. Here I am, six years later, and I stand by that statement. COVID is more serious than swine flu, but that's about it. Life will go on, and the church will outlast the fear mongers and the doomsayers. And I think it's a little funny how life repeats itself. Anyway, Jesus went heavy on the parables today, and the first will be our focus today. Jesus said, well, that farmer's enemy just threw a bunch of weeds into the wheat field. Eh, just leave it. Sort it all out at the harvest. So once again, Jesus showed just how knowledgeable about farming he actually was. And the important part of this parable for Jesus' original listeners is this. Some weeds look a whole lot like wheat. It's possible that the weed he was referring to was ryegrass. Ryegrass is practically identical to wheat to the naked eye until the wheat is ripe and ready for the harvest. And ryegrass has a very negative impact on the crop. Although ryegrass is good for sheep and other livestock, human beings can't eat it. So if you're looking for wheat, ryegrass is bad news. And the point of the parable is simple. Fruitful people and unfruitful people are indistinguishable for a time. Like wheat and ryegrass, you can't easily tell them apart until it's time for the payoff. So Jesus was speaking of people who do or do not build up the kingdom of heaven. It is hard to see someone for who they really are by way of first impressions. They need to show their true colors, if you'll allow me to mix my metaphors. And this is relatively fresh in my mind. I was, uh, I was joining people for online games on Tuesday nights uh, once COVID-19 hit uh, in mid-March, just to do something social with other people. So it's one friend I've known for many years, her husband, and then a bunch of other friends that I've never met in person, friends of theirs. And um, I still like my friend. Uh, she's nice, and I miss seeing her in public, in, in, in person. But uh, I, I don't join on Tuesday nights anymore. After a few weeks, I, I've come to the conclusion that I am, I am downright uncomfortable around her husband. It took me a while to see it, but he, he's ryegrass in my mind, in my eyes. I will spare you the details, but he seems to be the sort of person who takes very real pleasure in the suffering and discomfort of others. I don't like the way he treats her, and I don't like his attitude. I'd rather be alone with a book on Tuesday night than play in the ryegrass. There's probably a poison ivy joke in there somewhere, but I couldn't work it out. <laughs> now, we can also look to the good instead of the bad. We can hear these words in the context of modern discipleship. A 12-year-old with a vocation to the priesthood is identical to a 12-year-old with a vocation to married life. The gifts that make a 50-year-old man a good priest are the same gifts that make him a good husband or a kindly and helpful neighbor or the fun, crazy uncle. And I'm sure we've got a few of those here today. It's hard to see what something truly is before its time has come. 
So let me wrap up with a practical statement. Don't trust statistics and projections too much. And beware of people who say that you can't possibly fail or lose. And certainly, don't let people say that something can't be done before you've even tried. <laughs> we know wheat by the fruit of the harvest, not by the shape and the color of its stalk. We don't know our fruits by way of income level, upbringing, or education. We know our fruits by what we can do to help one another and glorify God. And that is the only real way to distinguish spiritual wheat from the spiritual weeds that inhibit real growth.